Hello my friends, I'm glad you made it today. Uh, today we're going to be going over chapter one uh, of uh, our recovery from uh, PSTD or childhood abuse or overcoming the things of this world and it's all uh, based on the book of Revelation and today we'll be going over step one and it's uh, 12 steps or, or 12 chapters or whatnot to, to overcoming these things. That's the thing. It's not just a one step to the process. It's a, it's a process to being made or being reborn again. And uh, it's not like any AA 12 step program or any of that. This is just purely comes all from the Bible. And it is basically the, the unveiling of, of the book of Revelation and, and how God is wanting to coat us in a coat of many colors, same for Joseph, uh, same like a pearl, and again, same for, for us today. And so, in chapter one, or step one, would be restoring spiritual faith, and it's the Jasper Stone, and that's what that represents, you know, we're not talking about uh gems and jewels or stones that are you know can be found in the river or whatnot but but these are spiritual things and these are gifts from God so when we're praying to God and we want to ask God for spiritual gifts these are the things we want to, to have wisdom and understanding of is what these things mean so when we're talking about restoring our spiritual faith we're, we're, we're talking about restoring things that are broken or lost have been taken away and, and that happens usually through uh, abuse in, in our lives whether it be as children or, or adults and the way I see it is if the human race is the children of God then we're all being uh, abused by the devil each and every day Watching television, things of that nature, abusive television shows, things of war, things of, of murder, and that, that that's a, a, a witnessing a abuse on, on somebody else. And you notice I got colored fingers because I was working on my coat of many color, colors, and, and it's a teaching tool for everybody, and I'll show you that in the next video. But... So what we're talking about when we come to Jesus and we're going to get baptized, we're making a confession, body, mind, and soul that we were once dead and now we're alive. What we were doing was causing death, pain, and suffering. And a lot of it is listening to the lies of the devil. So if the abuser comes to us as children and begins to tell us a, a lie, whether it be we're worthless or, or useless or we don't matter, any of these things, we can believe that. And, and when we're put into a state of weakness, and, and that's the thing how the devil works, it is, uses a, a time in our life when tragedy may be or, or we're in a spot of weakness, you know, he uses that as a foothold to, to plant his lie and then be able to uh, make us believe that lie. Now, now, maybe we go through life and we don't even understand what it was, you know. I wasn't abused. I was just raised, you know, by the rod, you know, <laughs> or whatever it may have been. Some people experience sexual abuse. Some children experience neglect, uh, things of that nature, and neglect really bad because it leaves you feeling very worthless and then later in life these effects of, of all these different abuses hang with us you know like I say I didn't know I was being abused I just thought that's how we raised children so that's how I raised my children and, and on down the line and, and all the while living in a state of abuse some of the things of the effects we, we have when we're being abused as children is uh, we, we lose uh, our self-worth. You know, we, we, we later in life try to get our self-worth from other people, especially people who were neglected have, uh, this is one of the effects. One of, some of the effects of, of childhood abuse 
you know, children, they're told they're s stupid or they're dumb, and then they believe that. And, and, and it's like they overcompensate trying to prove to the world, you know, or their buddies or friends or co-workers that they're not dumb. And, and you see this by how they tell stories. You know, you tell a fishing story, this person comes in, and they're always one up in you on their story. Well, whatever you say, they're, they're always trying to prove to you how smart they are, or how wise they are, or how wonderful their stories are, or, or whatever it is. All these things are, are signs of, of abuse. And when we look in the book of Revelations, we, we see the first thing we see in there is Jesus begins to identify the, the, the devil, right? Or, or the abuse, or the abuser, the, the wrath of God. He's identifying these things. And that's the thing in our life, you know, we, we sometimes don't want to identify or, or confess that, that a lot of our problems is we've been believing a lie. And one of the words and the things that the devil wants to use for us, and I know you say, boy, you're not, I wrote the book and trust me, this is exactly what it says. Uh, I just went through this through uh, last night with the children. I had uh, four 18-year-olds uh, here, and we were read through it, and each of them got to read uh, their own page in that. And it has an effect. It is powerful, especially when you're reading it yourself. And the way you can see the power is how it has an impact. It speaks to the individual, the, the reader, and... Uh, but anyway, I want you to just understand we, we, some of the part of confessing is, you know, that I was listening to the devil. So the devil uses the words of, like, I can't, and he'll put in and steal into you the word I can't, and then all of a sudden you begin to believe it. Oh, I can't overcome this problem, or I can't, you know... Uh, be like Johnny, you know, class uh, president or, or whatever it is. But but the difference between the president of the United States and, and us is this guy believed that he could. And, and that's the only difference. And, and that's what Jesus comes to give us is tools, uh, instructions. So if we have tools, then we begin to work the tools. Tools are made for working. You take a screwdriver and you put it to the screw and you turn it and the screw goes in. So we got to take this stuff and use it. And one of the things the devil's going to use is the I can't. And if I can't is powerful in your house, maybe that's everybody in your home uses the word I can't. And so you got to identify. With Jesus Christ, we, we can do all things and, and we're enabled to do all things that Jesus enables us to do. One of the things we gotta do, we gotta see when every time the word I can't comes in the house, you, you gotta attack that. And even if your neighbor or your friend or a family member comes in to say, and they say, oh, I, you know, and you're in a conversation and they say, I can't, you stop them right there. No, no, you, you, you can. And, and then you turn their conversation into encouragement instead of discouragement. That's this what the devil wants to do is discourage us and break us down. So that's our fight. It's not against flesh and blood or other people, but these words, thoughts, and memories that the devil uses. So one of the things in my life was memories, using memories of bad past, bad relationships, whatever it was. Your, failures to, to use that against us. So the more failures we got, the, the more memories we got, uh, or, or abusive memories, those things, they, they come in to hurt us. And that's the thing like the devil, man. He uses his words. I can't, like a snake bite, and it's just a simple word. And all of a sudden that bite begins to grow and, and faster, and, and all your whole arm is, is now doubled in size and aching out and you know from I can't that turns into uh, I don't right and then all of a sudden you know I don't matter uh, nobody cares I, I don't care and these things and then all of a sudden we're searching for help from other people 
and things. Doctors give us pills and different stuff to help us along our way. And nothing nothing helps. Nothing fulfills our, our heart's desire to, to have a life full of joy and happiness. Because the devil is constantly wanting to take that away. He starts with, I can't. You, you can't have joy. You can't have happiness. Uh, uh, you can't have a better job. You can't have these things. And then you begin to believe it. Because why? I, I don't matter. I'm not important. I, I, I don't measure up. And all those things are lies. Planted by the devil that, that are trying to overcome and take your hope and faith, joy, peace, and, and happiness away. So, one of the things we got to do is recognize we've been listening to the devil. And it's not about just giving up drugs and alcohol and all these things, all throwing those away. And even though the effects of abuse lead us to a path of drugs and alcohol seeking comfort, the deeper our abuse was, the, the further and deeper we go down a path of heavier drugs and alcohol, the, the further we go down seeking comfort, help, and in reality, those things just make us more sick, and it has an effect on everybody around us, and it creates depression, and from depression, it creates oppression. We gotta admit, something's wrong, and what we've been doing isn't been working, so we're gonna make a change, and that's where in the Jewish religion, they had the washing of the hands, and you know, and Jesus says, Oh, it don't matter if you wash the outside of the body or all of our body and all that, because our body is useless. It's about the spirit. So, if we don't have the spirit there with us, guiding us along the way, which is Jesus, then all this stuff is worthless. It's not, you know, and, and so that's what today is about, though, is the washing of the hands. And that's saying, I've been listening to the devil, and he's been tricking me, and I was agreeing with him. I couldn't, I didn't, and all of a sudden it led me to a place of I won't. And then in that place of I won't is uh, that rebellion. I, I won't do this, I won't listen, I won't. And, I, and all of a sudden, we're, we're there in our life, and... and I know why I would, how I will get joy, I will get happiness. If you would change, or if you would, because I won't, it's not me. And what we gotta recognize is it's in us. And in us is I will. In us is I can. In us is all things are possible. And even if that means today is the only thing you've been enabled to do is pray. That's okay. That's what Jesus Christ enabled you to do. You know, we got to completely eliminate what the eye can't say. And we got to turn our focus to what we can do. And, and we see with Jesus Christ, he can do all things. He can overcome all things. And, and he will enable us to do those things as well. We just have to be willing to, to be a part of that. A lot of times in our effects of being abused, we uh, we lose all our, our, our joy and our happiness. And that's because we're seeking joy and happiness through idols. <laughs> An idol could be a person, a place, a thing, you know, anything that, that, that we go to to put into high esteem that, you know, this is where I'm going to get my comfort from, my guidance from, my help from. And when those things begin to fail, we, we begin frustrated again. Frustrated, upset, angry, all those things. Because it is God who wants to be our provider. God who wants to take care of us. It, it is God who wants to be our Father. And, and so we got to learn that and confess that we were trying to, to get help and all those things from these other places except from, from God. So when we're going to wash our, our hands of that, what we're now going to say, I'm no longer going to use the words I can't, and it can't come into my house, and, and the words I don't, that they're not allowed, and because I do matter, 
And I can, even if that means wake up. Just that's all God asked you to do is I enabled you to wake up today and enjoy the sunshine. And that's it. You know, if you want to start anywhere, just start with, with one simple prayer in the morning. And that is before you start your day, you know, Jesus Christ, do you remember me? That, that That's plenty enough prayer. And that is what he's enabled you to do. That, and he will answer that. He will answer that. You know, one of the questions of it all is, how do we put our faith in an unseen God? And, and by the end of this book, I'm going to let you know that I don't have faith in an unseen God. My God is seen. Seen. Known. Felt and touched. But can we see him? That's the thing. Can we see him? Can we recognize him? And that's the, what we're going to identify is what is love? And when love comes walking in the door, how do we know what that love is? How do we know what love looks like? Because sometimes the effects of being abused is I don't no longer know how to receive love because I don't know what love is. You know, I, what things I thought were love all failed me and, and left me in a place of loneliness and, and uh, frustration and anger. But I didn't really truly know what, what love was. And so that's the thing we're, we're going to find out. is this laying down of our will for the will of God. Laying down our way, the wrong way, for the right way. God's way. And that's what that washing of the hands is. is Cutting the ties, cutting the, the things that were hurting us. And that could be, you know, forgiveness, you know, the, the abuses and the things of people in our past. We got to let it go. We, we're going to cut it off and, and no longer allow them to have power over our lives today. We're not going to let our, our past define our day today. We're not going to allow 20, 30, 40, 10, 5 years ago to find the, the, the person who is here today. We're not going to allow that to define tomorrow, but we're going to live in today. And that's a part of it. this thing is coming back to the moment. You know, we're going to cut the ties. We're going to cut the power of, of those. So we're going to wash our hands clean uh, of that stuff. And how we see how the, 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 the washing on the hands has worked, the chains have been broken, is when the next generation or, or your children are no longer being abused. When, when we have now put away, I can't, the, the, the way of your good for nothing, to put away the lies and, and begin to take up the truth. And we're going to begin to put the... the to practice God's word. We're going to begin to put to practice prayer. How do I see an unseen God? Well, first of all, ask him to be seen and he may answer you. Ask him for wisdom and he'll give you wisdom. You know, you, you, we, we begin praying and, and turning our life to God. First fruits go to God. That means first thing in the morning, turn your life to God. It's not, uh, let me tell you what I'm going to do today, God, and agree with me. It's here I am, an open vessel for your will. I'm here for this beautiful day. And whatever you've enabled me to do, Father, I'm going to be a willing part of that. Maybe today, all I can do is get up and go to the door and peek outside and look at the world. Because that's the thing. is In the world today, we become so afraid that we become oppressed and depressed by the things we're watching and seeing because if we watch and see a lot of television it's all uh, 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 murder, hate, anger, all those things are depressing. We don't even see it as abuse anymore. We just, that's Thursday night television. But in reality it's abuse and it's abusive to anybody who's watching it. It, 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 it distorts your mind to, to think that this stuff is acceptable and okay. And in the end, all of a sudden, in our houses, it, we're, we're talking and acting like one of those people. And then we wonder why our, our house and our families and that begin to, to, to come uh, unraveled or whatever it may be. And it's because we lose focus. 
that God is in our presence. So all of it, what is our spiritual faith in? That, that God is in our presence. In our presence. Not, not in an outer space, not in heaven. God is the Holy Spirit with us in our presence. And so we got to acknowledge God being in our presence. And, and we wonder sometimes why it is we're having bad effects or bad things happening in our life. And, and it's because we're not acknowledging God in our presence. And God loving us. Uh, rebukes us and, and corrects us and, and turns us back to Him always. And so that's the part I, I want to acknowledge. We, we, we have a, a thing I've got set up to do a hand washing and, and to show and explain a, a little bit about the hand washing and, and how let's put a little bit of these tools to, to practice. Okay, so I'm going to wash my hands and we can do this over and over because Every morning is a new day. And we can start over every day. Yesterday was a horrible day, but good news is, is, is when I died with yesterday, and today is all I have. So, so in reality, and we have right now, and right now we have the presence of the God. I'm not guaranteed tomorrow. I'm not guaranteed this evening. I'm only guaranteed right now. And right now, the presence of the living God is with us. So let us confess that, that God is with us. So that's a part of the washing of the hands. I, I got some great special stuff, some sea salt from uh, Israel. And I got a wonderful story about that. This uh, Years and years ago, I was at the mall at Christmas time. And... There's this young lady that was there, and she was from Israel, and she because she told me this, and I noticed she had a, a strange accent, and uh, you know, them Israel ladies, Jewish ladies, are always uh, look like an angel, you know, very pretty, and somewhere between 25 and 18, I don't know exactly how old she was, but comes and hey, I got this. I'm just a dude. Why <laughs> the thing grabs me by the hand, hey? I got this dead sea salt with milk and honey and all this, and straight from Israel. And, you know, I could tell she had an accent, very heavy accent. Well, where are you from? Oh, Israel, right? Where all this stuff comes from. Oh, wonderful. And, you know, I remember, uh, uh, I, I probably took a shower 45 minutes, you know, an hour prior to going to the mall and doing my shopping and things. and. and Here's this lady, and oh, I want to wash your hands in the stuff. And, and I don't need that stuff, you know. Well, you got a wife or a girlfriend at that time, you know. I, I was all alone in that, and, and I don't have none of that stuff. And, well, here, 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 and I got to wash your hands anyway. Ah, oh, my hands are clean, you know. <laughs> no, 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 those things are dirty, you know. Wash them with this stuff, and, and man, you'll see that your, your hands will become clean. And she washed my hands, and sure enough, man, that bowl, you know, dirty. And I was like, wow, my hands were dirty. <laughs> and, and in the Jewish tradition, you come to find out, hey, those people who are, are from Israel, and they're spies. And they're spies. Yeah, just like in the book of Joshua and, that, and, and Moses, they sent out the spies to go check out the land and see how it was. And, and if they didn't like it or see well, you know, agree with them, they would take over dominion over it. And by doing that is bringing in these rituals that they believed in their heart that they were doing for God's will. And so they'd go spy out the land just like they do today. They're, they're Christians, they're disciples of the Jewish religion, which is all from what we believe. And they come and they say, oh, hey, I'm going to take over dominion. And perform these rituals on you and then you know 20 years later here I still got that jar of stuff and want to show and explain to you how you know by faith in doing these things uh, God can begin to transform your life begins to heal you and that rebirthing process begins I want to remind you that Jesus, when, when at the wedding, when he turns the water into wine, there were six ritual washing jars that, that were there, and they were empty. So they were religious people, but all the jars were empty. 
He says, fill these to the brim. These things to the brim. And all of a sudden, wine came out. You know, wine is joy and happiness. And wine starts from the inside and works its way out. So anyway, you got this Dead Sea Salt, and it's got oil and stuff, and, and it sticks to your hands. And the thing of it is, it's like this. The, the confession and the washing of the hands with the, the oil and that. The oil sticks to you, and you can feel that for a while. And, and it's to remind you that, that, that once we confess God is our Father, once we're a part of it, once we're wanting to, and allowing God to lead the way, like that oil which sticks to your hands, God is in your presence leading the way. And so that's what chapter 1 is, is when we restore our, our spiritual faithfulness, that's when we're beginning to put our, our, our faith to work. God has enabled me today, whether it be simply this. One simple prayer. Father, help me. That, that, that might be the, 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 the prayer, and that's it. That, that's what he enabled you to do. Father, help me. Now, 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 he's enabled you also to trust him with that simple prayer. And that's what spiritual faith is. is God is in our presence. He now has hold of my hand. And we're going to let God guide me. You, us. And that's the thing, you know. Why do I make these videos and these things and write this book? I have no need for personal gain or trying to gain anything but to introduce you into a new relationship with our Father. This is for the human race. All human beings. One God, one faith, one Savior, one Father, one body. So, so when you're suffering, we're suffering. And that's the thing with in abuse and the effects of abuse. is It, it makes us all suffer. And we all suffer from it. But, but through the grace of the living God, just as, as Joshua saved Rahab, her family, her loved ones, and, and everything that was dear to her heart. This is the power of, of the teachings of Jesus, putting these to, to work. Because what we're end up going to do is learn how to forgive the abuse and, and be able to, to love our neighbor, love those who abuse us. We're not going to learn how to be... Uh, Holy in that way. We're already holy. We just need to believe that. We're going to learn how to love. We're going to learn how to love and forgive in the same way God did. And so we got to recognize some of the things that got us in the bad spot was our own failure to understand God. I When Jimmy or John or Jack come walking in the door, boy, I, I thought that guy was full of love, but really... He wasn't because I couldn't recognize love. He was full of lust or, or other desires. Lust, that word means uh, uh, the desire to have something that doesn't belong to you. Desire to have something that will hurt you. And that's lust. And it could be sex and all that. And that's the thing for me in my life. Uh, uh, you grow up, you, you be sexually uh, abused, it, it breaks your mind and then Work you down a, a path of lust and things of that nature. And, and we can see that in, in the world today. L lust, sex will, will never love you. So, so we got to identify what is love? What will love me? What can I grab onto? What is tangible? What is God's holy presence? What does that mean? What can I grab onto attached to where I can say, this is love, this is where I get my joy from, and, and, and I, I got it. And, and nothing can steal that from me. And that's what we want to overcome. If we can love the abuser, if we can forgive the abuser, he definitely can't steal from you. You know, one of the effects of, of depression and that is when we're feeling worth, unworthy or worthless, we can get all the way to bedridden. Or it's so tough to just get out of bed. But I tell you, each and every morning we wake up and we wonder, why did I get up again? Because God enabled you to. 
And if you come to this video and wondered why I came to this video, because God enabled you to. And it was faith to, to even watch the video. It's faith to even take time to do it. And that's what God's saying is I'm already begun the process. This faith has already begun. Because it, you expected to find something. You expected to receive something. And now God is willing to give that to you. Just talk to him, acknowledge his presence, and he will begin to, to restore your life, restore your joy and your happiness. And that starts today by the washing of the hands. We're no longer going to allow the devil or, or, or drugs or alcohol or idols or anything to, to find us comfort, but we're now going to turn to God who enables us to do all things, who empowers us to love ourselves. And we're going to be a part of that will. And so here in a minute, we're going to move over and I'm going to show you a little bit about the hand washing thing. It's purely a human ritual. But that's the thing, we go to get baptized and immersed in the water and that's the same type ritual, it's the same type thing. And we can do all this, and that's the thing. We're, I'm no longer going to allow the words of, of I'm worthless to, to come into my mind. I'll, I'll attack that, and I'll rebuke you, Satan. In the name of Jesus Christ, I am worth something. I rebuke you, Satan. I can do all things. And we're going to begin to allow the word of God to take dominion over our life by using these tools. We gotta work them. Tools are made to work. And that's where our faith. Huh. By my works, you will see my faith. Because Satan can't come in no longer and, and torment us anymore. So we're gonna close that door for him and we're gonna open the door to the truth. As Jesus says, I'm the truth, the way, and the life. And everyone who comes to Jesus will find out the truth, the way, and the life. God has created us wonderfully and fearfully made, each one of us. And that's the truth. Let us believe in God. All right, guys, I'll see you over at the washing table. All right, guys, so here we are over at our hand washing station. Uh, I got some oil here, a little frankincense, myrrh, and olive oil, uh, some dead sea salt, and... Uh, Milk and honey from, from Israel, and a little bit of water, and that's the thing that, again, we're, we're going to wash our hands, begin to wash our hands, recognizing that what we've been doing in life has been leading us down a bad place. It's gotten us to a bad spot, whether it be in depression, whether it be stress, whether it be worry, whatever it is, and we're now acknowledging that what we've been doing hasn't been working. So so we're going to try something new. We're going to go a new direction. So that's the thing. And a part of that acknowledgement is I've been listening to, to a lot. Maybe my abusive parents taught me how to raise my children. So that's what I've learned and that's what I did. And so, but again, I'm going to acknowledge that what I've learned, been doing what, what was wrong. You know, uh, maybe for us it's been worry. I've been watching the news and all the stuff, and all of a sudden I got weighed down with worry. You know, Jesus says, don't worry. I'm going to confess, I've been worried, thinking that the devil had control of the world and, and forgot God was the one who has control of the world. Again, I'm going to wash my hands of those things. And tomorrow, today, right now, uh, I can... Acknowledge God is in control, is with me in my presence, and as the oil sticks to our hands, so is God's hand sticking to our hand as a child and his father, and we're going to begin to walk a new life. You know, that's the thing I, I want to remind you that memories are the worst thing and the hardest thing to get rid of. So a part of washing our hands Let's not allow yesterday memories or past to define who we are today. 
And you want to know how you know memories are defining who you are today is when that has more power over your today life than today. I'm worried about 20 years ago or 10 years ago that then right now in this moment. And so we can wash our hands clean of that. Taking away the power of yesterday so I can live empowered by what Jesus Christ has enabled me to do today. And tomorrow we'll have new faith. Give you some more. That's the thing. Jesus gives us a little bit to be faithful with. And if we're faithful with that, Tomorrow he'll give us a little more. Today I prayed, uh, help me. Tomorrow, help me, Father, get to the door. And, and then we're at the door, and then all of a sudden we're outside, and we get to the end of the driveway. Each day God will enable you to do a little more. And we can start right here today with step one, washing our hands, recognizing that, that what I've been listening to, what I've been doing, whether it be listening to doctors, clergymen, police officers, whoever it is that's been rejecting us. Rejecting us. Maybe it's ourself. Maybe ourself has been rejecting us. Again, we're going to wash our hands of what the devil's been telling us, the lies. Eh? And we're now going to make a new effort to believe in the truth, the, the, the power of the Almighty God who loves us. So, so if you'd like come step up and this is just purely demonstration so everybody can see do this with your family your friends your husband your wife uh your children you know that's the thing is if you do these things with your kids it's it does have an effect guys uh, i'm trying it and working through the book and all this stuff and i got these 18 you know three four 18 year olds and i tell you what if we can't make disciples of these guys through these teachings and instructions, I'm throwing it in the trash because it won't work for nobody. Because these are perfect kids uh, of every day's life who the world has written them off. And isn't it those people that God wants to restore, and those who have been written off? Yes, so, so let us begin today as restoring our hope. So let's here put a little water here. That's the thing, we're, we're, we're going to believe God is a restorer come to freshen our bones, freshen our life, uh, refreshing our, our heart, whether it have been broken, if we've been lonely, whatever it may have been, God has come to restore that which has been broken. If we couldn't believe that God could love us and, as though we were his very old children, uh, again, he's going to restore that which was broken, the truth. The truth was broken. And he does love us. He does care for us. And that's the truth. And you, you, that's the part where identifying love and what love really looks like. That's part of the identifying the truth. Sometimes we thought we knew what love was. And maybe that wasn't the truth. Maybe that wasn't love. Maybe the truth of, of love is that who is willing to lay down their will for their friend. And if Jesus is the almighty friend of all friends, laying our will down for his will, and his will is to heal us, to restore us, to, to have us all live by the, the truth. And the truth is we have the same power living in us that rose Jesus Christ from the dead, and that's the truth. So here's a little ointment to remind you that, that God is always with you. And, and like that special fragrance, you know, he, he will always heal us and take care of us. Even Paul says, well, anoint those with, on the head with some oil and God will, will restore them and help and heal them. And whoever that is, he can heal depression. You know, let's think with Prozac and... Uh, uh, so often that, you know, those pills, they, they always run out. They don't heal depression. you got to keep taking that stuff. But God can heal us and heal us with an everlasting heal. Are we willing to receive that? Can we believe that God loves us enough to do that for us? And that's part of one of the things of the effects of abuse is 
the devil tells you you can't be healed, you can't be loved, you can't be cared for, and you definitely can't be like Jesus Christ. And all of those things are a lie. We can be healed, we can be helped, and we can walk just like Jesus Christ if we walk by faith. And that's what we're doing today, restoring our, our spiritual faith in Jesus Christ and His love for all of us. As he said, you know, you know who I am. You, you know who my children are by the way they love one another and they care for one another. So, so let us begin today by forgiving our, our past and taking away the power of yesterday so we may live empowered today. Praise God. And let us end with the prayer. Heavenly Father, I ask that in the name of Jesus Christ you would come and bless this video, bless anyone who views it. I ask that you would bless these words, for they are the words of your Spirit, and I know in them words our eternal life. For all who trust you will be blessed. And we do these things by trust in you, trying to, to manifest you, Father, in, in our realm. Take dominion over our realm. Let your kingdom come, so we may see it, so we may feel it. Restore us, Father. Restore the whoever's watching this video. Restore these teachings and instructions. Restore our life. So we may have joy and happiness once again. In the name of Jesus Christ we pray. Amen. Amen. All right, and, and here I got suit number three. And here was the original suit that I made. And again, uh, we find in the book of Revelations, you know, I, I told you guys I'd uh, show you the suit of many colors there later in another episode. And I started thinking, yeah, why wait for tomorrow when truly all we have is today. So, so I thought, well, okay, let me begin to explain this to us. Because we got to remember, in the scriptures we find out that Heaven is God's throne, and the earth is his footstool. And so what does that mean? And the same thing, when we confessing to God, we come and we come to find out God is super holy. And what are the glasses about? You know, there also we see in the book of Revelations, God has like eyes of fire. And what does that mean? You know, and we see in the scriptures again, that, that pure gold is refined in the fire, and it's in the fire. All the dross, the, the impurities, anything that's imperfect is burned off, and nothing can be seen but pure gold. And when we have gold at its very purest, at its very finest, at the purest it can get, we see like a reflection. It looks like a mirror. And that's the thing in the book of Revelation. We see once you go through the gates, pearly gates. We, we go into heaven and the first thing you see are, are streets of gold, like, like glass, like mirror. And that's what God's saying is, is through the fire and the fire of his eyes. In, in the end, if you could see me, you'd see that uh, uh, there's like mirror image and, and it looks like what you would see yourself, like if you were looking in the mirror. And so God says anything that comes through his eyes is burned up in the fire. And all he can see is the image he made, which was the human beings. See, we're all made in his image. And it was in his image he made us. And so part of all this in step one, as we come to find out, we have the Jasper Stone and everything. But we also find out in the book of Revelation, Jesus gives each one of us a white stone. And it's on that white stone, he gives us a new name, a name that's only known between you and God our Father. That white stone represents purity, cleanliness, without blemish. Son of God, child of God. And on that, you know, like at birth, that's the thing. Only you and God know who's actually watching this video. Because it was God who brought you here. So we come to find out where we put his faith. It's like a mustard seed and it starts to grow small. And 
We come to expect to find something. We come to expect to learn something. We come to expect to get something. And that's the part where God wants to give these things to us. All these are our gifts. What was broken? A lot of us today say, oh, it's the temple in Israel was broken, the nation of Israel. And so there again, we're always trying to make it somebody else or something else. And what was broken, stolen, or lost was us. The individual, the people, the person, you and me. And so what does God want to restore? The holy temple of the living God? You and me and us. So what was lost is he's going to bring it back together and rebuild it. And that's what this is about. He gives you a name at birth. Because God birthed you. He knit you together in your mom's womb. He, he knew everything and when the time was appropriate, he would come and unveil the truth to you. See, Jesus Christ is the truth, the life, and the way. I am. And when we can believe that I am the truth, the life, and the way. Right? Jesus says that the, the same power that rose him up now lives in us. I am the truth. I have no existence unless God gave it to me. But because I have existence, I am. I think and I am. Son of I am. Begotten of God, Yahweh. Right? This is the truth. And when I can believe the truth that I am because He is, this is truth, and this is what it means to follow Him, and I am the way, that, that eternal life lives in you now. And this is the only way, because you are made in God's image. Because God chose you. The way is in you. I am the truth, the life, and the way. And there's no other way. God did not come in, in a tree. He did not come in, in a statue. He did not come to you in this form or that form. He came to you in the form of a man. Jesus Christ. If anybody tells you that Jesus Christ has not come, that's deceiver. Jesus came and he came in the flesh. The Holy Spirit of the living God dwells within the flesh. Man. Can I believe that? Jesus says eternal life is in you to all those who believe that. As Jesus says everybody who loves me loves life. There's no other way to come to the Father except through Him, the Son. The acknowledgement of the Father. And us being a son, and we shouldn't be ashamed of that. I, if you can't say, I am, and the truth is that life lives in me, the eternal life, that, that's because we're ashamed and we're listening to truth lies. And, and that's what we need to fix. That's what is broken, the truth. And so we have this suit of many colors. You all have your name, and just like Thomas, Jesus says, hey, we don't believe in an unseen God. I know we start out believing that, that oh, all my faith and everything is wrapped up in an unseen God. How do you believe in an unseen God? Well, I'll tell you the truth. For me, David, I can't. I believe in a seen God. One who can be heard, felt, and touched. Can you see him? Can we see him? And it's a process to having our eyes open. And so when we're asking for gifts from God, let's not make it a, a things of this world, but these things are spiritual gifts. First thing we got to ask for is faith. And so as God is, heaven is his throne, and, and the earth is his footstool, we, we come find out like Jesus, you know, God, we're, we're, he's holy, so we're going to lay down into God's holiness, and ah, first, lay, bow down to his holiness. So first thing we're going to see is the jasper stone, which is faith, and this is why 
in the New Jerusalem of where we're going to find our peace and rest is when all this has been restored. We're not talking about those people. This is about me, and this is about you, the individual, and about the restoration of our lives, your life. We can't make it about them. We'll deal with them when we get to them. First, let's deal with us, me and you. So we come to it first, and like a mustard seed, we got to start with our faith. Can we believe that we are sons of God? Can we believe that God is in our presence today? And when we begin to wrap it, how do we start? We begin to talk to God. We begin to ask God, can I see you? And he will answer you. Give me wisdom, and he will answer that. Let me understand the wisdom, and he'll answer that. And begin to build a relationship. Begins to manifest himself in our presence. And then after that, we, we begin to build our, our work on our integrity. See, God's showing us prudence. He's teaching us prudence. We take one step, and then we begin to look for where the next step goes. And, and that's prudence, seeing that, that our actions, our works, our deeds, our faith can be seen. And if we're looking forward to where our steps can go, we're not necessarily talking about looking to tomorrow, but how do we affect people right now today in our life has an effect on tomorrow. And we can't do nothing about yesterday, so we're going to cut yesterday off. It's not about yesterday, it's about living today in the presence of the living God. Let thy kingdom come. Let thy will be done here on earth as it is in heaven. So, so we're going to begin to understand just as God is in heaven, they're in body so they can see him. Here we are in body so we can be seen. But later we'll be spirit, but right now God is spirit. So we're going to flip one day <laughs> later. But first the transformation begins now. We got to begin to believe that God is with us now, today. So we're going to begin to restore all these things, and these are gifts from God. This isn't something we got to do. This isn't something we work for. Our faith is the work. Do we believe in these things? Do we believe God is faithful? Do we believe God is just? Do we believe God is love? And we got to restore all that because if we've been abused as children, it's hard, especially when people who have been put over us that have been entrusted to take care of us, break us and violate us. It's hard to believe in a father of forgiveness, of love and mercy when we've never seen love or mercy. We have to restore that because God is love and mercy and the way of abuse isn't the way to raise children. We may have thought that, that that was okay, but it's not. It's what we learned. You know, the devil uses tragedy, things of that nature, to make us weak. I remember when I was a young boy, one of my friends, he killed himself. He uses a weakness to use that to, to break you down. Question God. But it, when we seek, he will give to us. Sometimes we don't get because we don't receive, right? We don't ask, so we can't receive. That is just asking and God to open us up and eventually we're going to restore all these things. And just like a pearl, we're going to, as it's restored, as it's fixed, us. Not, not the world, not the country, the nation, but us, the individual. We begin dressing ourselves in these things. And growing in. We see in the New Jerusalem that, that we have the foundations and all the apostles are written on the foundations. And then we have all these miscellaneous stones. That that's your stone. That's our stone. We are living stones who believe in a living God that can be seen, can be felt, can be touched. See, Jesus says, Does thou know you're my child by the way you love them? 
Paul says, put your hands on them so they can feel him, so they can see him, so they can touch him. Some people don't have the Holy Spirit because they never asked for it. you got to go and put your hands on it and say, God, bless them with the Holy Spirit so they may know you, see you, and feel you. Then you have all these things. And who wants to know God? Just like Thomas. I want to know God and I don't want to take no word from no man ever again. They lie. But only when I see him and only when I feel him and only when I touch him will I believe in God. And Jesus Christ says, here I am. Feel me. Touch me. Feed me. I show you. Stick your fingers in my wounds and understand. I'm alive and I live in the flesh of all men. He's the light of all men. Do you believe that? He says, says, I gave my one and only son so that all men who believed in him would have life. That life believes in us, it lives in us, and if we can believe in ourselves, does not God also? If we're not ashamed of God or to be his child, neither will he. Neither will he. So we see, what does what is, what is all these names and all these things mean? These are people who wanted to feel and touch God just like Thomas. All they got to do is feel you and touch you. And Jesus says, if you want to feel me, if you want to touch me, come, feel me and touch me and put your name right here on me. And that's what it's all about. And God takes our name, our being, and who we are because we were made by Him, loved by Him. And He puts them all right there in His heart, in His chest, just like at the ephod. Because He judges us righteously. He judges us with these things. And so that's the thing, when we're covered in His grace, in His love, in His mercy, and all of our faith has been restored to a rightful place with Him, there we begin to look just like the pearl at the pearly gates. And He says, come, he says, come in and live with me forever and ever. Where peace and harmony live together. So I'm going to remind you guys that this is all step one. Next time, step two. Step two. We, we took step one, and now we have enough faith for step two. We saw that it was sweet, it was good, and it is possible. All things are possible for those who believe in the living God. See you next time, my friends.